Hello there, it's Saturday the 1st of December 2012. Chris Reardon with today's United Kingdom talk. And we must start with singing happy birthday to my niece-in-law, Stacey Butler, in Woodhall Spa. Good morning, Stacey Butler. I know it was yesterday, dear, but this is the closest show to your birthday, so this is the one you're going to get. Are you ready? Here we go, boys and girls. Where's my music? Stand by with the orchestra next door. It's whole orchestra next door. Playing my little bits and pieces. Oh, yes, dear. Did you know that? Here it is. Are you ready, Stacey? I don't even know how old you are, dear. I'm going to guess about 25, 24, 25, 26. Stacy, of course, recently mothered. She is a mother now. Yes, has been a mother now for about six months. And there's another one on the way. God, knocking them out, aren't they? Left, right and centre. Oh, Sue, my nephew and his wife. So uh, happy birthday, Stacy. I hope you have a wonderful time yesterday. Because I know it was yesterday. What did you eat too much cake? Did you? Oh, you naughty girl. You had a whole cake to yourself, you greedy old cow. Why haven't I had any? You better save me a bit of cake for when I come up at Christmas. Can you freeze Christmas, uh, birthday cake? Is it a sponge? I don't like fruit fruit iced cake. No, for, oh, and do you know what I can't stand? I hate, I hate Christmas cake and Christmas pudding. Oh, it's vile. Blech, blech. Oh, it's just such an adult taste. And as you know, I will never, ever grow up, Stacey, darling. I'm not going to grow up. It's Christmas. Do you like Christmas pudding or Christmas cake? What about you? Do you like Christmas cake and Christmas pudding? Do let me know. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I do like a sponge cake with buttercream filling or something like that. It's quite nice, isn't it, really? Although I have now stopped eating dairy products. Oh, yes. First of all, it was the vegetarian vegetables, no meat. Now it's dairy products as well. Yes, and the reason is I saw uh, how cows are mistreated and now they're made to have loads of calves so that, that they don't really want, that they, um, uh, 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 so that they keep producing milk. Oh, it's horrible. You see it all on YouTube. I'm not going to go into it on this program, OK? But the cows are mistreated and then their babies are taken away from them immediately and you look around and they're mooing for them. Moo! 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 They're looking for their little baby calves, dear. And they can't find them. It goes on for days, apparently. Oh, it's awful. And then, when they have them, then they make them pregnant again, all over again, dear. It's awful. So I don't do dairy products either now. Uh, so I might have to have a word with a doctor, because probably I will be calci calcium deficient. Because we, don't we get calcium from milk? So if I'm not drinking milk, I'm going to become calcium dis deficient, aren't I? Because I have soya milk now. I have out-pro, unsweetened soya milk. It's all right. It's no problem at all. It's fine. No problem at all with that. Once you're used to that, that's it. Just had some of my breakfast this morning before I come up to talk to you, actually. Boys and girls. Uh, very, very cold here in the UK at the moment. It was freezing last night. I got up this morning, I was a bit late getting up this morning, about half past nine, um, to find a little message on my, uh, on my uh, mobile telephone telling me that my best friend Ronnie is on his way home in uh, premium economy class, dear, on, 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 a, on an airline I'd never heard of, actually, coming, coming back from Thailand. It wasn't Royal Thai Air. It was some, some other plane that I'd never heard of anyway so he's on the plane at the moment coming home and uh, I'm gonna have to go around to his house actually and have a bit of clean up because he's, he lives just up the road from me and he's got wooden floors you see well it's been very very wet here recently it's only just dried up but but the, the wet weather has been replaced by very cold weather it was freezing this morning freezing I got up went downstairs to the kitchen uh Popped outside to get a bucket of water to flush the toilet. Because, as you know, I use rainwater to flush my toilets, boys and girls. Yes, I'm becoming even more environmentally friendly as we speak, dear. 
I am a friend of the earth. I do believe the earth is a living thing. It is. It's a living thing, and we must treat it with a bit more respect. So I now use rainwater <clears throat> to flush the toilet. I have two large water butts outside with buckets sitting in front of them, and I fill them up, and I and I flush uh, and I flush the um. Uh, the uh, the toilet with it, just pour it down, and I have the two buckets ready. So once I've used it, I then take it out to the water bar, fill it up, and then it's ready for the next one. And they stay outside. Well, this morning there was a layer of ice on one of them, dear. I thought, what am I going to do now? But the other one didn't have a layer of ice on it. Probably melted by now, actually. But yes, I wonder if these water butts freeze, do they? And surely, because the plastic, uh, the, the the tap that um, the water comes out with is only a little plastic thing. Presumably that might split mine. Anyone got experience of water butts in freezing cold weather? Do let me know. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. But I was able to flush my toilet. Thank you very much. And quite apart from the environment, I'm also on a water meter. So every little drop of water I save is more pounds in the pocket. Gling! Gling! We like that sound. That's the sound we make when we're saving or making money. Try it with me. After three, one, two, three. No, listen first and then try. Here it is. Gling! Okay, here it is again. Gling! You try it now. After three, one, two, three. Nope, not very good. Try again. Listen carefully again, boys and girls. Here it comes. Here comes the sound of that till opening and money going in it. Are you ready? Gling! Gling! Try again. After three, one, two, three. Ding. Very good. We make that money whenever we save money or we make a bit of money. So whenever you're going around somewhere, perhaps you're in a supermarket, see one of their dodgy special offers or something like that, um, you know, pick it up and then, oh, I've saved 13 pence. Ding. To whoever you are. Even if you're on your own in the supermarket, you must do it. Join in the fun here, boys and girls. This program is all about having fun. It really is. Forget the worries and the toils of your life. Join us each and every time here on United Kingdom Talk for another half hour to, to forget your lonely, pathetic lives that you leave and let me bring a, just a tiny little bit of sparkle into your life twice a week. And spread the word, boys and girls. Spread the word. Are you watching this program via Facebook? If so, please copy and paste the link onto your wall, or indeed your friend's wall, and spread the word. I'm desperate, boys. I need more viewers. <laughs> Things are getting desperate here. They really are. Do you know what? Sometimes my friends are so, how many people watched your show today? And I might say, oh, 90. And, it, and he laughs. He takes the piss, boys and girls. He takes the piss out of my little show. He does. My best friend. You know, you can rely on some people, but you can't rely on him. All he does is run down this programme, he really does. <laughs> and it hurts. It's like a knife going into my chest, it really is. <laughs> the toil and the trouble I spent. <laughs> trying to work out things to make you smile. And he does, he sits there and he takes the piss. Oh, it's too much. It really is too much. By the way, even if you're in the supermarket on your own, maybe you're feeling a bit down. You're walking around that supermarket feeling a bit down, are you? And then you get to, to I don't know, the, the, the marmalade section. And you're a marmalade fan, of course. And then you see it, 20 pence off. You pick up that jar, you put it in your boat, and in a loud noise you go, ding! <laughs> oh, don't worry about the other people looking at you as if you're mad. Who cares about them, dear? As long as you are having fun. That's the point. And when they say, where did you learn to get that noise? You can tell them. You can spread the word again. I heard it on United Kingdom Talk. And the person will probably say, who the hell, what the hell's that? And you can explain it to them. It's this sad old bloke sitting in a spare room <laughs> doing his little show twice a week. Anyway, back to my mate's house. So he's coming back from his holiday and uh, I must go up there later. I've been feeding the cats and uh, actually because I've been feeding the cats, I haven't been able to do my swimming because it's, uh, it's, it's only like 
10 minutes up the road on a push bike, not even five minutes in a car. But time we've got there, fed the cats and come back again, I found it was just rushing around too much. So I decided um, to have a couple of weeks off from the swimming. And quite apart from that, the last time I went was, well, it, was, it is two weeks ago now. Uh, oh, I'm going to sneeze. Would you excuse me for a moment, please? Oh, oh God! Oh, I nearly shot back out of the door then. Do you do powerful sneezes like that? Powerful Oh, we love it, dear. I love a good powerful sneeze, don't you? And it shoots out your mouth everywhere. Oh, it's wonderful. Not in front of people. Please use a tissue or something like that. But if you're in the car, that's when I like to sneeze. You know, because I'm driving along, I've got, oh, I'm going to sneeze now. And I open the window and I sneeze straight out the window. Some poor old dear with a walking stick got it in the face the other day. But I don't, I don't think she knew it was me. Eh? I do like a good sneeze. I really do. So I've got to go back up to his house. And where the cats have come in and out of the cat flap, he's got a wooden floor and there's lots of little paw marks everywhere. Little black paw marks. And... I shouldn't really tell you. I hope he doesn't watch the show. I have noticed he's got these throws over his um, uh, settee and all that. He's got white white furniture, white settees. And I noticed one of the throws had, had fallen down and there are black paw marks on the corner of his settee. Now, the thing is, do I tell him or not? I should just let him find out. I think I'm not going to tell him. <laughs> so that I, I don't want to get the blame for that. Because, uh, uh, you know, obviously not me who done the black marks, but also where the paw marks are on the wooden floor, there are also foot marks where I've gone out into the garden. Because one of the cats likes to be fed in the garden. She won't come in the house when anyone's in there. You have to put the food down outside, and then when you've closed the door, she comes and eats it. Bless her. Lovely old dear. Black cat she is. Beautiful black cat called Maddie. And she really is. Excuse me, can I blow my nose? I won't be too noisy. <laughs> Oh, dear me. It's all going on here, isn't it? By the way, I'm feeling much better. You know, I had that... I think I had a cold. I feel a hell of a lot better now. I think that's... I think that is... My immune system has knocked it out. Because, actually, um, I had a... Uh, a very phlegmy cough on Monday. I thought, oh, here we go. Another chest infection. I thought to myself. Uh, and, but I went to bed Monday night, got back up, and it would completely cleared. No more phlegm or anything. So I'm quite pleased about that, how we, how we fought that one off. Anyway, so there are foot marks as well on this wooden floor, which are obviously mine. So I'm going to try and give the floor a bit of, bit of a mop before he gets in later and have a tidy up. Because I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not the tiniest person, you know. I mean, I, I drag the hoover around now and again, but that's about it. Like, oh, I hate cleaning kitchens and bathrooms and things like that. Do you? Do you have a cleaner? Do you have a cleaner? I saw advertised gay cleaners the other day. Gay, yes, gay cleaners. And <laughs> I don't know what all that's about, dear. But you, they, they can come and, and they, can, they can wear, they, they can wear certain outfits that you can request. I don't know what all that's about. £25 an hour, dear. Are you having a laugh? £25 an hour because they're gay and they wear, wear a certain outfit for you? I don't think so, dear. No, not only 25 minutes an hour, 25, £25 an hour. Minimum of two hours work, it says. 50 quid to have your bloody house cleaned. You're having a laugh, aren't you? In American, that would be about $70 for two hours' house cleaning. I don't think so, dear. I don't think so. I'd rather turn the cat upside down and use her as a duster. I really would. I don't think so. So that's it. He's coming back a, a little bit later. And uh, it would be quite nice to have him back, really, I suppose. <laughs> I suppose. Soon, it would be soon. He'll find something to moan about anyway. I'll clean the floor. He will find absolutely something else to moan about. But of course, while he's been away, the cats have become very friendly with me. Oh, yes. Yeah, because I've been the one feeding him. Especially his um, uh, rag doll cat, Ralph. Oh, he's a big cat and he's such a nice cat. Follow he comes round, you come in the door, close the door, and he immediately attaches his tail to your leg. And there's another little cat I was having a little kiss with. I don't know if I can find a picture of that to show you somewhere, those of you that are watching the show. Um... Let me just write that down, because I tend to tend to say these things uh, cat, of me kissing one of his cats. 
cat picture kissing. I'll have a look at that, and if I can find that, you should have seen that by now. Okay, if not, then I'm sorry, you won't see it. Alrighty, um, let's see, we've got quite a few emails here today, boys and girls, so I shall uh, read some of those out. Hello to uh, a very good friend of mine, Alexander. Alexander, I must tell you, used to come to uh, a place I used to work in, Camden Town, about, uh, well, I, I left there five years ago. He used to come about 10, 10, 11 years ago to a Monday night there where we used to play, uh, uh, where I used to be DJ. And he writes, hi, Chris, long time, no speak. I do enjoy seeing little glimpses of what you are up to on Facebook. Just wanted to say thank you for uploading those photos of me in my younger days. I'll come on to this in a minute. <clears throat> it really brought back some wonderful memories. I can't believe you still have them. It's very cool. I hope life is treating you well. And at some point in the near future, I hope to see you again. Thanks for being such a special person and giving me back some wonderful memories. And that's from Alex. And uh, what a lovely, what a lovely email that is. Thanks for being a special for, uh, a special person and I'm quite touched by that and, and the wonderful memories of course and sometimes when you're doing the job I'm doing like DJing or karaoke and things like that I think sometimes you you forget that as well as being a job you are giving people a night out it might be a very special night out it might be their birthday Maybe they're in there with someone special. You know, like on a on a first date or something like that. And you forget. You do forget sometimes that that night is very special to someone. And then years later, someone will come up to you and say, thanks for those Tuesday nights. That really was part of my childhood. And then that's, that's, what, that's what really does it for me. Something like that, you know. Having a little email like that. Now, he mentioned the photographs because what I've been doing is uploading all my photo albums to Facebook. Now, if you want to join me on my Facebook, my Facebook username is Chris Reardon UK. All right. So it's facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. And then if you click on my name, and then photos, you'll see the various albums. There are a lot of photos on there now. What happened, the site that was holding my photos, Webshots, uh, is about, I think it's, I think it closed down today, actually, the 1st of November. And uh, we all got an email telling us um, that our photos were being transferred to a new site called Smile. OK, so that and that happened automatically without me having to do anything. I don't think. Anyway, I looked on there and I noticed the photos were not separated out into their various albums. For example, photos of friends, photos of this wedding, photos of this holiday. Do you know what I mean? They, they transferred the photos, but they were all in one folder. So it, it, was, it was like just having a big case of photographs not separated into you know, albums and things, so you know what's what. I thought, what a blooming stupid idea that was. Apparently, it wasn't technically possible to do that. I don't believe that for one moment. I think it was technically possible, but they just couldn't be bothered to, couldn't be asked to do it, I reckon. So I've got all these photographs on there, and I thought, well, and on, downloaded back onto my computer into their relevant albums. So I thought, well, I'll look around somewhere else. And then I thought, well, hang on a minute. I could put them on Facebook for nothing. And that's why I put them all up there. Now, if you want to look at those, everything is on there. I tend not to edit things. What you see is generally what you get, OK? So there's photos on there from years and years gone back, including my foolish youth as a some very funny parties, some funny photos, some photos you might think, oh, that's a bit, but it's not, it's all about a laugh, okay? Most of, most of my life I spend trying to have or give other people a laugh. So bear that in mind when you see all these photos and they're all up there. There's also my, my serious, my serious age, sort of in my early 30s, when I'm trying to look, trying to look quite buff. It didn't quite work, but there we are. Right, so they're all on there if you want to have a little look, all right? Um, hello to uh, email at DJ Musical Host. 
That's a good name. DJ musical host who writes this uh, via YouTube and says, Christmas comes early these days because we were talking about uh, Christmas shopping and all the uh, decorations and all that in the shops. Well, we're in December now, so I, I kind of accept now is the time to put the decorations up in shops. Not at home. Not at home. Too early at home yet. No more than two weeks before Christmas at home, please. If you don't mind me saying. Um, and DJ Musical Host says, Christmas comes early these days. The shops have been selling Christmas items since early October, which I don't agree with. And some Asian bargain shops sell Christmas items all year round. Yeah, I've seen that in the... Um, uh, we have a, a large uh, Asian shop in uh, Bracknell, and they've, they always seem to have little fairy lights and things up there. But then again, you, you have the, all the other religious festivals as well that have lights like a Diwali, isn't it? Diwali, Diwali, D-I-W-A-L-A, I think that's how you say it. And um, various other religious festivals. And uh, I suppose they use uh, lights and uh, little decorations and things like that, as well as our Christmas. With decorations, they come up early these days. They think we're still old-fashioned or Scrooges. Well, they do. <clears throat> People think that I'm old-fashioned because I don't agree with having Christmas decorations two, more than two weeks before Christmas. In fact, I think, if I remember rightly, Mum and Dad, we didn't put them up sort of a week. I think it was about a week before Christmas, just a week before Christmas. Yeah? Yeah? Um, oh, what have I done here? I've um I've confused my emails there, wait a minute. Should be one here. Ah, oh, there we are. Hello to There we are. Hello to Stella. Hello Stella, I haven't heard from you for a while, dear. And um Stella's cat, Ginger, likes watching my cat when she appears on the video. Now she's nowhere to be seen today. She had a little mad episode earlier on. Running up and down the stairs. I know at her age. She started running, and running around the house like a lunatic, which I remember doing, actually, before she went on the um, hypothyroid tablets. So I'm wondering if they're not working anymore. A little bit concerned about that. But it, is, it, is, it will be time for another little visit to the vet soon uh, for my cat, because it's been six months since the last one, and they have to take another blood sample and check there that the thyroid tablets are working properly. So I've got a feeling they're going to tell me to up up the dose, and I'll have to do that sort of in the next couple of weeks. And it says here, uh, Stella writes this, Ginger has missed Katie, cat to Katie, your cat, today. He's been watching the computer. I have been teasing him with Katie, playing back her calling calls, like, meow, meow. He caught another cat in the garden yesterday and went mad. I didn't let him out in case his brother was around. Or do they gang up on other cats? <laughs> I think you ought to play back today's show. Uh, the Nodding Reindeer Act reminded me of the penguin from Batman. And there was a touch of Dame Edna in there. Miss your calling. Lots of love from Stella. What? What? My, not my nodding reindeer? Ain't like that. What, what noises made the reindeers work? Don't make any more noises, do, my noises, do they? They don't do anything like that, do they? No. What noises do reindeers make, Stella? Perhaps you could do one and send it as an MB3 to me, eh? She also says, welcome to my world. I've been a vegetarian since birth, and look at the size of me. Yeah, we talked about being vegetarian the other day. And um, if you think you're going to lose weight, think again, because uh, I, I, I've never had such a big waist as I am. I just weighed myself the other day. 12 stone 10 again now. Oh, God. A 30, I'm a 36 waist on the jeans now. But I was thinking about that 36 weight slot, right? Get a ruler out. <clears throat> now, what I consider as a, a really good waist size is 32, Okay. For years and years and years, I was a 32 waist. Now, it seems I'm 36. Have a look at ruler. <coughs> Excuse me. And see how big four inches is. It's about that big. It's hardly anything, is it? We look at those four inches on a ruler. It's barely anything at all. So do we need to worry about anything, really? I'm not sure we do. <laughs> Stella says, <clears throat> you can live more healthily as a veggie. 
I think people should think about what's going on in these abattoirs and the hormones produced by animals. Have people forgot CSD? No, it's not CSD. It's, um... Oh, I know the thing you mean. CSD, um... Oh, <clears throat> no, what is it called now? The mad cow disease thing. I know what you mean. Have people forgot mad cow disease? All the other crap they're digesting from the animals and things we don't even know about. As I've said before, you know, you've only got to look at YouTube and see how um, animals are mistreated when they're farmed for our use. You know, to see there's a little field that I cycle past on the way to the swimming pool. And three lots of animals I've seen in and out suddenly disappear overnight. Once it was pheasants. I watched them as little chicks. And the fence isn't high. Presumably they don't fly off. Fence wasn't very high. And they got bigger and bigger and bigger. <coughs> and adult pheasants walking around. Loads of them in this field. They looked happy. Don't get me wrong. They looked happy. They were obviously free range. Right? They looked happy. And then suddenly, overnight... They all disappeared. And you just knew they were in a truck somewhere. Going to have their poor little throat slit. I'm sorry. That's how it is. You know, don't tell me. Oh, I don't want to know. Don't want to know. Don't want to know. And then another occasion, there were lambs. Little baby lambs wandering around in this field. They were only there for two weeks. And the entire lot suddenly disappeared. When I say loads, I'm talking of a... Well, must have been a hundred in there. hundred lambs in there. Next day I went past, all gone. Never to be seen again. You know where they were, don't you? And at the moment, again, pheasants again. Pheasants in there at the moment. And I know one day I'll go past and they'll all be gone again. Oh, I wish I could just open that gate and let them all free. I'm free. Um, so thank you very much for that, young Stella, my darling. Let me see. Um, how are we doing? Oh, I do. Do one more email, I think. Oh, just to let you know, um, very, very bad news about a television program that I have loved and adored for the last five years. The TV series Merlin here in the UK is finishing around Christmas time. And then that's it. Apparently, they're not making any more. And I'm so disappointed because it would come to the end of the series and I would spend nine months desperately looking forward to the next series of Merlin because it's usually on September that starts in September and goes right the way through to Christmas well apparently that's it they're finishing at the end of this series and then no more Merlin I'm so so disappointed I really am it really has been the best thing on the BBC over the last few years um, it walks let me tell you it walks all over Doctor Who. It really is. Doctor Who, I do watch Doctor Who, but I think a lot of the time it's overacted. The last writer made it too complicated, and some of the times um, you couldn't understand. Actually, this series wasn't too bad, but the series before um, I found very complex and couldn't understand what was going on here, there, and everywhere. So I'm uh, very, very disappointed to hear that Merlin's coming off. Now, the actor Colin Morgan, who plays Merlin, an uh, Irish actor, uh, was interviewed about this and said, you know, it has kind of, you know, it is at its peak now. And it, and it really is. This particular series has been astounding. It really has been outstanding, this series. And the show is now at its peak. And they want to go out on a high. And I completely understand that. But nevertheless, I'm bitterly disappointed that they've decided not to renew uh, for another series or, or ten <laughs> of uh, Merlin. So, so very, very sad news with uh, Merlin finishing there. Couple of records in the charts at the moment that I really like. I don't often talk about music uh, here on the show, which is a, it's a bit odd, really, as I'm a DJ. But there we are. Uh, Ollie Murs and Troublemaker. 
Have you heard that one? And the heart attack. Whoa. Da, 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 I like that one. And I also like Robbie Williams and Candy. And it occurred to me the other night that the, that Robbie Williams music and Ollie Muir's music appears to be coming together. Have you, have you noticed that at all? Their music is coming, very, very similar music from both of them. Robbie Williams and um, Ollie Moore's. Both, I, I've always liked both of their singers. And they're, they're, Robbie Williams has really grown up now, hasn't he? And Ollie Moore's is getting there. And it just, uh, certainly Ollie Moore's comes across as a really nice person. He seems to manage <clears throat> to keep his, his private life out of the paper, which is um, uh, really good news, you know. Although a lot of the time, I do believe a lot of these celebrities, you know, when you see photos of them coming out of a kebab shop, and all, I do believe all that's set up. You know, because they're so desperate, some of these so-called Z-list Z celebrities, so desperate to stay in the paper and all this business, that they get, oh, oh, I'm, oh, I'm just going to a kebab shop. Do you want to be there with a camera and all that business? <clears throat> and I haven't got the time of day for them, but Ollie Moors, Ollie Moors, it comes across as a really nice chap, doesn't he? Keeps all his stuff out of the paper. So I'm very pleased, and he's got a number one with that song at the moment, which he did with uh, Flo Rida. Uh, troublemaker. Uh, da, 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 da. I always remember the line in it. Heart, he starts going on about a heart attack. He's got a little dance he does with it as well. And of course, Robbie Williams uh, has been at the top with Candy. That's on its way down now. But uh, I, for me, that that song is the best song Robbie Williams has ever done. Candy. I do do like that very much. Anyway, I was going to do another email, but I've noticed we've done half hour now, so we'll leave it there, boys and girls. Uh, Marge, your next email coming up in the next show should be on Wednesday, all right? Uh, the email address, I'm going to give you the postal address as well in a second, boys and girls. Okay, if you want to put pen to paper... Oh, I'm going to have to bring this up on the screen now because I can't remember it, what it is now. Because, um, one second, let me just get this... Right, where is it now? There it is. Uh, if you want to put pen to paper, perhaps send in a Christmas card, anything like that for me to read out, I'm going to give you a postal address in a moment. I've got permission from uh, one of the managers of one of the places that I work in to use the, that particular pub to send anything in. So that's coming up in a second. The email address, all your comments, anything like that, anything you want me to talk about, anything at all, please send them in at chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co. Dot UK. Chris at United Kingdom Talk dot co dot UK. The postal address is Chris Reardon C slash O two Brewers T W O B R E W E R S one one four Clapham High Street C L A P H A M High Street London SW4 7UJ United Kingdom. All right. Once again, Chris Reardon C slash O 2 Brewers B R E W E R S 114 Clapham High Street London SW4 7UJ United Kingdom, and they get to me there. All right? That's it for the show today. You have a wonderful weekend. I've got a nice uh, 50th birthday to do on this, um, on this Saturday night, so I'm very much looking forward to doing that. I'll let you know about it uh, on the next show. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>